Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of housing in London, uh, and we're going to try to predict um, the number of houses being sold uh, in a given date, uh, actually a given month, uh, in a given area. So let's hop into the notebook. Uh, we're going to be using NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. For pre-processing, we'll use the train test split function and standard scalar, and we'll use a bunch of models today and compare the results. So let's go ahead and import that. Uh, and we'll load in the data using pandas.read.csv. So we can grab the file path to the CSV file up here. I'm using the monthly CSV file, so I'm going to paste that in, and we can take a look. We'll also get a little more information with data.info. And you can see we have at least some missing values. Here we can see the counts. So it looks like the only column with substantial missing values is this one right here. Um, and additionally, we have some categorical data as well. So let's start pre-processing. I'm going to create a function called preprocess inputs. This is going to take in a data frame. For now, all it will do is copy over the data frame. So uh, the first thing we should do is try to identify any columns we need to drop. So the thing I notice immediately is that we actually have redundant columns, um, just two of them, the area and code. The code always goes to the area. And I verified this. Every time we have an area, we have a corresponding code. So this is actually redundant information. We just have to drop one of them. Let's go ahead and drop code. So we'll say uh, drop redundant columns. That's just the code column. Uh, so df equals df dot drop code, and we're dropping from axis one, which is the column axis. So let's go ahead and get the results down here. Store it in x. Pass in data, uh, and you can see we no longer have that code uh, column with us. So then let's look at missing values. So x dot is an a will give us a missing value uh, matrix, where true represents a missing value there. We can then sum over the rows to get the total number in each uh, column. And what's even better than getting the total number is to take the mean, which takes the total number, divides it by the length of the column. We get the percent of missing values in a column. And you can see we have 45% missing values in the number of crimes. Usually when you have over 25%, you should probably just drop the column because filling in the values uh, is basically fabricating the information. And when you have too many fabricated values, uh, the model tends to not perform well. So let's drop number of crimes. Uh, we'll say drop columns with too many missing values. So df equals df dot drop number of crimes from access one. All right, so we're narrowing down our data, but we're cleaning it in the process. Um, so the next thing to do would be to identify the remaining missing values, which are actually a very small number. Uh, we can get the sum here. You can see this is 0.6% missing. So there's only 94 missing values, and but that happens to be in our target column. This is what we're trying to predict. So we can't predict value, values that we've imputed. So we're going to drop any rows where we have missing values in the target column. So let's say drop rows with, my W key is not working. Weird, okay. <laughs> with missing target values. So we'll get the uh, missing target rows by taking uh, the column. So let's, let's take the houses sold column and use is an A on that column to get a true false array that tells us where there's missing values. We can then use this true false array to index our x and get all the examples where we have missing values there. Then we'll type dot index to get the actual indices and we'll drop these indices from the data. So let's go in here, uh, change x to df and then df equals df dot drop missing target rows and we're dropping from axis zero this time. We're also going to reset the index afterwards so that uh, we don't have we have consecutive indices, and we're going to include drop equals true so the old indices don't become a new column. Now, if we run this, you can see we have no more missing values. Uh, we're good to go. So now, last things to do is to uh, extract the features from date. So date is actually composed of year, month, and day. Let's put those in their own columns. And in fact, we don't need the day feature since this is monthly data. Uh, the, the day is defaulted to be the first of every month. So we're just going to drop the days. We're going to take out the years, take out the months. For this, we're going to use the toDateTime function from Pandas. 
So we pass in the date column. That will convert it to a datetime object. We can then apply a lambda function to the column that for every x, which is one of these things, we get x dot year. So that's a nice thing about using datetime objects. You can just use the year attribute to take uh, to get it back as an integer. So let's do that up here. Um, we'll say extract date features. So we're going to take the date column and turn it into a datetime uh, column to start. And then what we'll do is take, we'll create a new column called year, which will just come from the old column, but with the function applied that changes every x into x dot year. We'll do the same thing for the months. Let me just change these to month. And when we're done, we'll drop the date column since we now have taken all the information we need out of it. So there you go, we no longer have date, we now have year and month. And like I said, we don't need day. Last thing to do is now deal with the area. So the area, uh, there's multiple values in there. We'll just take a look at that. Take a look at the unique values in area. So there's like 50 something values here. Um, and because there's no ordering between the values, we're gonna one hot encode this column. So to one hot encode, we're gonna use pandas.get dummies. So we pass in the area column and that will send each unique value to its own column and a one represents the original value of that example. You can also include a prefix into this function, which will uh, just put a name at the beginning of each column name so that we know where these columns are originally coming from. Let's go and use this up here. We'll one hot encode the area column. So here are our dummies. Let's call it area dummies. And we just have to change x into df. Then what we'll do is add those dummies to our uh, our data frame. So df equals pandas.concat to concatenate the original data frame and the new uh, area dummies side by side, so axis one. Then when we're done, we can drop the original area column since we have the dummies already. Uh, and here we go. So now we have 50 columns and you can see all of our one hot columns on the end. Um, but we have also, uh, we've dealt with all of the categorical data. So now we're gonna try to predict houses sold using the rest of the data. So let's split DF into X and Y, where Y is gonna be uh, the houses sold column, and X is all the rest of the data. So that's our feature data, houses sold. We're dropping from axis one, store that in X. Then we'll do our train test split. And we're gonna use the train test split function from sklearn for this. We pass in X and Y, specify a train size of 70%, that's just our choice. I'll keep shuffle equals true, so it will shuffle the data before it makes a split, and then a random state to ensure the shuffle is always done in the same way. That will return us four new sets of the data, x train, x test, y train, and y test, and those are the four sets I want to return from the function. So let's look at x train. Uh, we now no longer have the, the houses sold column, and we are dealing with 70% of the data. So y train should be the other 30%. And we're almost ready. The last thing I want to do is scale the uh, x data. So right now the columns all take various ranges of values. The one hot columns take ranges of uh, zero to one. And over here we have them up into the hundreds of thousands. So let's uh, standardize all the columns using a standard scalar. I'm gonna scale x uh, with a standard scalar. So we'll create the scalar object and we'll fit the scalar uh, the scalar will just shift and scale each column so that they all have a mean of zero and a variance of one. Uh, we'll fit the scalar just to the train set and then transform the train set using scalar.transform. And we'll also transform this, the uh, test set using that fit. So we only fit to the train set because we want to pretend we don't have access to the test set when we're doing the pre-processing. Uh, this returns a NumPy array, so let's turn it back into a data frame afterwards. Uh, so that we can just visualize it nicely. I'll keep the indices the same as they were and the column names the same as they were. Then we'll, we'll copy this over and we'll um, change all the x trains to x test. All right, and now we have scaled data. So every they all have the same mean and same variance. All right, now we'll do training. So we're gonna do a whole bunch of models. Uh, for the sake of time, I'll just paste in this dictionary. It maps the name of the model to the actual instance of the model. And what's nice about this is we can just do a for loop for every name and model in models.items. 
So items will return the key value pairs as tuples, so we can iterate through two at a time. And then we'll fit each model on the train set. And we'll print out a little confirmation message that says, just says the name of the model and that it was trained. All right, so we have linear regression, uh, three types, one with L2 like regularization, one with L1 regularization, one without any regularization. Then we have the k-nearest neighbors uh, algorithm, a neural network, two support vector machines, one with a linear kernel, one with a nonlinear kernel, uh, a decision tree, and then all of these ensemble methods, uh, which are, is random forest regression, uh, gradient boosting regression, and then uh, XGBoost, LightGBM, and CatBoost. So uh, they're finishing up now, and we'll get the results down here. So what I want to do is print out the R squared score for each um, example. I don't, we'll get the RMSE and R squared. So first, let's do the RMSE. So for name and model in models.items, uh, we'll calculate the RMSE, which will be, uh, first, let's get some predictions. Ypred will be model.predict on xtest. And then to get the RMSE, first we'll get the, that's, that's the root mean squared error, which is a, it's a, the average error across all examples, but in the unit of the actual target column. So what we'll do is take the true values, subtract the predictions, that will be the difference between them, that's the error. Uh, then we square that error, that'll be the squared error. Then we take the mean to get the mean squared error, and we take the square root to get the root mean squared error. We'll call that RMSE, and we'll print it out. RMSE, uh, first we'll put the name of the model, followed by RMSE, and we'll display it to uh, four decimal places. Format here with RMSE. Uh, so if we run this, <coughs> we should get it for each one. And you can see the lower this is, the better. <coughs> we'll also get the R squared scores. So um, we just for that, we don't need all this. We're just going to print out the name of the model followed by R squared and format it using model.score x test y test. So the score function will return the R squared score if you're using uh, regression models. <coughs> all right, so it looks like from the RMSEs, the best model is definitely XGBoost with a 1287 RMSE. That means on average, we're off by about 1287 of whatever unit the original uh, price, uh, number of houses is, actually, sorry, sorry, it's number of houses. So we're off by about 1200 houses on average. Um, so we are dealing with some pretty big numbers in here. Um, the houses sold, uh, where is it? They, it can go up, I think, interesting. There are, there are some very big numbers in this uh, column. You can see we have 37,000 of one of them. So maybe this isn't great. Oh, it's about 1,200, so I don't know, not too bad. Uh, and our, our R squared score is saying how much better the model is than predicting the mean every time. So you can see we have a 98% uh, reduction in error distribution uh, using XGBoost than we would have if we just predicted the mean. All right, and that will sum up today's uh, video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.